Today, we're going to talk about keywords that are basically useless in C. Welcome back. It's still the holiday break, or at least it was when I filmed this, and I'm in the mood for some lighthearted banter about useless programming language features, specifically keywords. Today's video is brought to you by the wonderful people you know who you are who support this channel through Patreon or merch or many other ways. Thank you for being here and for all that you do. So what is this about useless keywords? A while back, I made a few videos about individual keywords in C, keywords that often trip up students. I definitely didn't get to all of them. I got to static and extern for sure, but there are 34 different keywords in the C language. And then there's a few more that start with underscores that were introduced in C99 and then later in C11. I'm going to ignore the underscore ones today. And there's a few more that I'd like to talk about definitely const, but I also get questions from students about keywords that, well, I'm thinking, what do I say? Do I give you a history lesson and explain why it used to be useful? The point is, is today, some of these keywords really aren't very useful. We just don't, you just don't need them. So I thought today would be fun to talk about which keywords are the most useless, because some are like almost useless and some are like really useless, and just see if we agree or disagree and maybe, maybe I'll learn something out of it. So if you want to play along, pause the video, go down into the comments and list the C language keyword that you think is the most useless, basically the one that you think we could all live without forever. Keep in mind that we're talking about today, not 40 years ago. So useless today. So put your thoughts down in the comments and then come back up and resume the video. I don't want to bias you. And of course, there's probably a few of you out there who are brand new to this and going, what's a keyword? And all a keyword is, is a special word in the language that means something. Okay. So basically like you can't go around in C naming your variables int or double like this, this sort of thing would definitely not go over well because there's special keywords in the language. Okay. So now that you're all back from entering your votes down in the comments. Now it's time for the winner and the winner is return. Just kidding. You don't know how badly I would love to do an April Fool's joke video about how you don't really need the return keyword in C and just see how long you all put up with it and see how long it takes before everybody realizes that it's just a joke. But then I get thinking that some of you won't watch the whole video. You'll just see what I'm starting to say and you won't get that it's a joke. And then you'll end up failing an exam and you'll blame me for giving you incorrect information. And I'm not sure I could live with myself after that. So we're just not going to do that. So now seriously, what are my top picks? Basically, I have two honorable mentions and two real useless candidates. And of course, these are just my opinions. It is very possible that I'm missing a very useless keyword and just not realizing it, not thinking about it. Or maybe I'm forgetting something positive about one of these keywords, some redeeming value, some nuance that I'm either not aware of or not thinking about at the moment. And I hope you'll remind me. That's totally cool. Please do let me know down in the comments. I always love it when you remind me of stuff and sometimes when you teach me stuff that's totally new. So let's start with the honorable mentions. The first is extern. Now, I know I made a video about extern and I even used extern occasionally. I do think it has one redeeming value and that is in allowing you to communicate with other programmers the intent of a particular variable, how it's intended to be used when you're designing an API. So check out my extern video for more details on that. But today in 2022, it is totally possible and likely that some of you will be able to go through your entire programming career and using C every single day. And some of you won't use C every day, but if you did use C every day, there's still a good chance that you would never use extern, or at least you wouldn't have to use extern. And the simple reason is that by default, all of your variables are extern to begin with. At least all your global variables. So for that reason, extern definitely gets an honorable mention. Now my second honorable mention, and this is going to get a few people bent out of shape, is long. Now I know there's something super satisfying about writing long, long in, long, long, but seriously people, if you need more bits to store your integers, if you want to store larger numbers, switch over to using standard integer types, those defined in standard int.h. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I have an older video on this topic. Please do check it out. But essentially, they allow you to specify exactly the size of the variable that you want, exactly how many bits you need to store the data you want to store. And yes, I mentioned long and I'm focusing on longs right now, but the same argument actually goes for int as well, except that ints are more common. And it seems like everybody's default variable type. And so I'm going to pick on long instead. And the problem is, is that ints and longs, you don't know how big they're going to be. I mean, an int is usually 32 bits long, except on that microcontroller over there. 
on which it's only 16 bits. And according to the C standard, a long is guaranteed to be at least 32 bits, but it could be longer. But so if my machine has 32 bit ints and 32 bit longs, then what's the point of having long instead of int? Even though it feels like long should be longer than int. And I guess my point is, is that programming is complicated enough without adding all of this uncertainty, all this fuzz into the mix. It only takes typing a few more characters, actually less once you bring unsigned and signed into the mix, and it's gonna make your code more predictable and more portable. But okay, some of you are saying, what about long double? And this is why we're in honorable mention territory. Long double is still frustratingly vague. On processors that support it, long doubles are gonna get mapped to extended precision floating point hardware in your processor, but you cut the usually in there, right? Because that long double might be 80 bits or it might be 96 bits or it might be 128 bits and it's gonna depend on the machine you're running on how much precision you're actually going to get. But the problem is, is that as far as I'm aware, there isn't an equivalent, there isn't a standard int.h, there's not like a standard double.h that does the same thing for doubles as it does for ints. And who knows, maybe there is and I've just missed it. But so the point is, is that if you need a floating point number with that has 128 bits of precision, then yeah, you'll have to use a long double and you better hope that you know what hardware you're gonna be running on. But just know that that code is gonna run differently on my laptop here than it will over on my microcontroller over there and possibly on your laptop. But sadly, without writing your own floating point library or using some third party floating point library, I don't know a really great way to get around this. So long remains an honorable mention because of the long double case and because everybody uses it. And of course, at this point, some of you are saying, but Jacob, you've used int and long in a lot of your examples. And that's very true. I know guilty as charged. And this is why it gets an honorable mention because of two things. One is that old habits die hard and int and long are ubiquitous. You see them everywhere. They're in a lot of different code, a lot of APIs you code to, a lot of built-in functions are using ints and longs. And so naturally we can't really get away from using int and long. And when I'm teaching absolute beginners, there is the advantage of the fact that I can just explain to someone, this is a number, it's an integer, and I don't have to get questions about what does the eight mean? What does a 16 mean? What does a 32 mean? What's a 32 bit integer? What's a bit? Because honestly, when I'm first exposing somebody to programming, I don't really want to have to get into numerical representations. Maybe we'll save that for day four or day five. But anyway, I guess the point is int and long aren't going anywhere. Use them if you want. The point is, is that you could get away without using them pretty much in all your programs. And the only consequence would be more portable, more predictable code. Okay, so enough of our honorable mentions. Now let's move into the truly useless keywords. Because our honorable mentions had, they had some redeeming qualities these next two, I'm not sure they do. Now, the first one is register. Now, the register keyword allows you to specify a variable as a register variable, which back in the old days when dinosaurs roamed the earth might have made someone's program faster, maybe. I wasn't alive back then, so I don't really know. But now that we have optimizing compilers, it probably doesn't ever. In fact, well, here, just out of morbid curiosity, I'm going to, we're gonna play around with it. In case some of you haven't seen the Compiler Explorer on godbolt.org, it is great for things like this. It basically lets me play around with different compilers and different versions and see what sort of assembly code they generate. But so if I take this really simple function right here, and let's say I decide I'm going to change this local variable, this integer, and I'm going to make it a register, variable. It was totally legal to do that. But you notice what happened? Nothing. Nothing happens. We get the same generated code, no change whatsoever. Now, right now I'm using a recent version of Clang. It's possible that with an older version or another compiler that I will get actually different code. And if I were to find such a compiler version, I could out of curiosity, try it out and see if it actually made any difference in the speed of the program. It probably won't, or maybe a little, but probably not enough to make it worth any of those extra keystrokes I had to type. Feel free to correct me if I'm missing something, but the register keyword, it's just a hint, and the compiler is free to ignore it, and nearly all reasonably intelligent compilers will generate the same code with or without this hint. So my opinion is, why bother? Now, my second top pick, which I think is actually a tie with register on the uselessness scale is auto. But actually auto might be a little more problematic. It's problematic because auto is used in C and C++, but this is one of the cases where a feature in C and C++ looks similar, but they really do quite different things. And auto in C++ probably deserves its own video. So I'll save the details about auto for that video. 
But the point is in C++, it actually serves a useful purpose. There is some debate about some of the pros and cons of using it, but it's not useless. On the other hand, in C, auto is basically useless. So what does it do? Well, if we look back at our program here, what auto allows me to do is to specify, for example, that this result integer is an automatic variable. So auto is a storage class, which basically says that this variable is a local variable, which is automatically allocated and deallocated on the stack. But the problem is, is that every time I declare a local variable, it is auto by default. So if I don't put auto here, it's already auto. See, I don't know if you caught it, but if I add auto, you notice the code generated doesn't change. If I remove auto, the code doesn't change. So sure, if you want to type more, maybe cause a little confusion for your C++ friends, then by all means use auto. But seriously, unless there's some secret use for auto that I'm not aware of in C, I find it to be pretty useless as a keyword. So I hope this was interesting, useful. Let me know if you think I missed something or got something wrong. And until next week, I'll see you later.